the heck, Bryce? What the heck? Why'd you kill me? Sorry, man. It's just a game. No, man! This is serious. I'm gonna sell this like men. I challenge you to a game of pool. Friday, after school, after physics. You're on, but I have to train first. Rising up, back on the street. Did my time, took my chances. With the distance, now I'm... Man, you suck. Bryce, do you know why you fail at pool? It's because you don't know the first thing about the mathematics of billiards. Oh, now I see. Billiards is a game of math and physics. The best billiards oh, players you. rely on angles, collisions, and spins to set up their shots. Let's take a look at the most basic aspect of pool. Force. At the most basic level, when a cue hits a ball, it applies a force. Because F equals MA, the ball is accelerated very quickly to a constant velocity. This velocity gives the ball kinetic energy, because KE equals 1 half MV squared. But there are two types of kinetic energy, translational and rotational. Translational kinetic energy is like that of a bullet, based solely on forward moving speed. Rotational kinetic energy comes from objects spinning, like a hamster wheel. Billiards balls have both types of energy, moving and spinning at the same time. A pool shark can manipulate this concept, hitting the cue in certain places to give it either more translational or rotational kinetic energy. The force from the cue also gives the balls momentum. The faster something is moving, and the more mass it has, the more momentum it has. Objects with large momentums are not easily stopped. Kinetic energy and momentum are both very important when talking about the most significant part of pool, collisions. Pool balls collide in elastic collisions. This means the tiny interlocking atoms and molecules of the pool balls collide like springs and then push away from each other. This conserves both momentum and kinetic energy. So basically, the kinetic energy you put into the pool stick stays on the table until friction finally eats it up. This is very different from an inelastic collision, such as two cars smashing together. Here, the objects are deformed and kinetic energy is not retained. Now, where does the skill come in, you might ask? Well, by giving the cue ball a certain velocity, spin, or direction, one can manipulate the trajectories of the balls in the collision. By giving the cue ball a large momentum, one can impart more speed to a larger number of balls. Or, if one hits the ball on the side, it can be given a velocity vector perpendicular to that of the cue ball. So, do you follow me so far, Bryce? Now it all makes sense. Now that you've got the basics down, I think it's time to talk a little bit about angles. Angles are an extremely important aspect of pool, and are necessary for both pros and beginners. What a beginner should know is about angles of reflection. When a cue ball is shot off the side of the table, the angle of incidence should always be equal to the angle of reflection, assuming there is no English involved at least. This can allow a player to set up a bank shot and shoot around another ball. If we look at this on a more mathematical level, we can predict exactly how many bounces it will take a ball to enter a pocket when shot at a given angle. When simplified and given a pool table of length m and width n, four pockets, and a coefficient of friction of zero, 
It will always take the cue ball M plus N minus 2 bounces to enter a pocket when shot at 45 degrees. This is very interesting. In more complex examples, use of the ergodic theory and dynamical systems may be necessary. This is the case with our Hazen's billiards problem. This problem seeks to find a point at the edge of a circular billiards table that would deflect a ball shot from one given position into another ball at a different given position. This problem is completely unsolvable using a simple compass and ruler setup. The mathematics behind the trajectories gets even more complex when one solves for that of an elliptical, polygonal, or even three-dimensional pool table. Now it's time for some real math. Using the laws of conservation of linear momentum, conservation of angular momentum, Coulomb's law of friction, Newton's law of collisions for homogeneous and spherical spheres, and the theorem of kinetic energy, it is possible to find almost all the information about a collision through substitution. When you are finally done, you should get an ad equation that looks like this. This equation has all the information about the collision, including positions of the ball, their velocities, and the angles that they collided at. Although, I don't think anybody's actually ever used it when playing pool. And now you know about the mathematics of billiards. It's time to apply your newfound skills, Bryce. The new pool master is in the house to take down Sabin. It's not over yet, Bryce. It's not over. Ah! Oh my god! You can run, Bryce! You can't hide! Down, Bryce. Never. Wait. Ah. Oh, my foot.